I welcome you all back again to The Silver Lining Episode 3. Let's just keep going through this Has stuff. Has he ever said anything about how he feels? At times. Sometimes I get him to the point where he's about to let it out, but then he'll catch himself and pull away again. What has he said in these moments? He's unsure of what he deserves. He hasn't told me this directly, but that's what I gather. He is stubborn at times, and won't take orders from anybody. He's probably had enough of those. <laughs> I also think he's very afraid of losing all he has now. Does he blame us? No, never. He's most happy to have found you. He always imagined you like that, he says. What does he like to do? He enjoys his time by my side, but sometimes he just likes to be on his own. You can't blame him. He's not used to being around people. Well, he's gotten better. The first weeks, I'd be lucky if he stayed in a town meeting for more than an hour. Now he even enjoys the company of others. But still, there's a dark shadow. Almost like a living pain surfacing in his eyes. All you can do is be by his side. That's what I do. He's learned to come to me, and I'll keep silent while he cries on my shoulder like a scared child. He must have some terrible demons inside. It's really heartbreaking. He just holds me tight as if not wanting to let go. Do you think he's... gone? He's not gone, my child. I know this is hard on everybody, but we must keep the faith. You know, they say that people can still hear when they are asleep. That you can transmit certain emotions. We shouldn't let him hear this. Hey, you're the one who's being negative, all right? I'm, I'm the Did one being Did you find my positive. daughter to your liking? Of course. Rosella yeah. is... Well, she has all this energy. One night, she almost convinced me to steal the ferry and travel to the Isle of Mist. But Edgar and Alexander came back at the moment we were preparing to leave. Don't let yourself be carried away by my daughter's ideas. Sometimes I think she'll never grow up. Oh, I don't see the need to be too hard on her. We've become really good friends over these few months we've been talking to each other, especially after the wedding was set to be here. I think she's just... afraid. With a husband, there comes responsibility. And children. Yes, and she won't be able to go adventuring as she's used to. It's just that she's afraid. But I'm sure she'll get over it and grow to be a wonderful wife and mother. For the sake of Edgar, I hope so too. <laughs> I, I really do like these topics. Uh, I know that this game isn't to many people's likings, but I know a lot of others really look forward to it. And the depth that they're adding to these characters is just you are oh, to have grown up very in such interesting. A land as this. I guess I am. Though sometimes I think the weather is just too hot or the waves are just too violent, I am glad to rule over it. I'm sure Alexander is too. Does he ever talk about his own homeland to you? All the time. I would love to visit your kingdom again after we get out of this mess, which I pray we do, King Graham. Daventry is so lovely. I would be honored to welcome you there, Cassima. Do you think the Isles are recovering from this? People have been sending messages to the castle non-stop since you left. Everyone's worried. They're afraid to leave their homes. No one knows how the other Isles are doing. It is your duty as a queen to reassure them. That's what I'm trying to do with this speech. I will be addressing the people at noon. Perhaps you can come by and add something? They are your people, my child. I'm just a foreigner, and it's you they believe in. You'll do fine. I can only hope. And Valenice. Why do you think my wife was acting the way she was, Cosima? I have no idea. <sighs> she just started talking to herself and walking around as if she couldn't hear us. I'm sure it's the tragedy that caused her to almost go mad. I don't understand. Valenice could match me with something like this any day. She's endured similar tragedies before. As terrible as this is, I don't think this alone could have made her act in such a way. What do you think this other thing is, then? I don't know. I don't have time to find out now. I will do my best to try to be by her side. Thank you, Cosima. I'd better leave you to your work. I'll try to stop by to listen to your speech. Thanks, King Graham. It, it, it really is amazing, this level of depth that they've added to the characters, though. It, it's... Graham gazes at himself in the mirror, 
There's more gray hair than the last time he checked. Stop being so nosy, Grant. That's <laughs> private vanity. <laughs> oh, just... Can I... Get... Searching through Cosima's and Alexander's wardrobe will not help matters, Graham. Looking closely, Graham finds the same old scratches and scuffs as it once had, plus a couple of new ones. On one of the sides, Graham can still find the badly carved G that he put there when he was still a child. His father wasn't at all pleased when he saw it, and Graham was badly scolded. <laughs> Alexander keeps old mementos from his first visit to the Rabbit's Green Isles <laughs> He told his father that he used to exchange them with the king, the pawn shop owner. But once he settled down, he went back to the shop and bought them all to remind him of how he came to rescue and marry his true love. I take them? Unless there's a very good reason for Graham to use it. Unless. 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 Alright. Just making sure. Well, and I'll do the. A long time ago, before Alexander was born, Graham read a book of a man who journeyed for years in search of his purpose and fighting against an inherent darkness that struggled to overcome him. The protagonist's name was Alexander. It was so compelling that it led Graham to name his son after that character, and he desperately hopes now that Alexander is as fortunate in his struggles as the one in the story. Graham has never seen Rosella lying so still for such a long period of time. He cannot help looking at his little girl golden locks with tenderness. A few strands fallen across her face, her mischief-filled eyes shut to the world, and her voice so silent. The land's all the poor for being deprived of her laughter. For a moment, it's too much for the king, and he feels his legs struggle to hold him up, his will gone and his heart filled with only despair. But he perseveres, knowing his little girl needs him now more than ever, and Graham is determined to rescue her. Uh, oh, you know what? I did want to check my inventory. All right, so we've got this necklace, the cloak, this was the bag. And Graham thought he was never going to find the magic bag he needed. This was the cup. Graham hopes no one's tried having tea in this cup. Yeah, it had like nastiness in it, didn't it? Sorry if I... It takes me a little while to remember uh, certain things. It has been quite that some time. Is not oh, that's right, that's his tongue. Graham hopes no one's tried having tea uh, in right, this the poison cup. arm. It probably ran away. Alexander gave his father some currency of right. the Kingdom of the Green Isles. Graham would rather not be carrying anything touched by that. You were warned. One use only, and you already used it. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just trying to get an idea as to what's going on here again and reacquaint. But uh, as I was saying, one of the hardest parts of a game, you know, you're just getting stuff on the screen. It's, it's a real challenge to overcome just that. But to write such a great story, and I, I mean, for this game is, it rivals really any professionally made, uh, and the only reason I say professionally is, you know, for someone making money. I mean, if you consider what these people have put, how many hours it must have taken to work this, the story, the everything on it, it's it's extremely impressive. I'm, I just cannot say enough good things about this game. <laughs> I, uh... I had the pleasure to play the game with my sister a little bit, and that was, uh... The guard dog's stiff posture and alert gaze make it clear she takes her job very seriously, and Graham doesn't doubt that she's very good at it as well. In a way, she reminds him of Sir Connor, young but serious and dedicated to her position and her kingdom. He also can't help but wonder if she's related to Captain Saladin as the only other collie guard dog he's seen. I talk. Good day, I grab. Good day, your majesty. <laughs> Yikes, that was loud. What was that, your majesty? Nothing. What are you guarding, good dog? My duty is to keep anyone from entering the throne room while renovations are happening. I thought they had been put on hold for the wedding. Yes, but Captain Saladin has been investigating every corner of the castle search of clues to find the stranger. 
So now that the throne room has been reopened, I stand here to make sure no one enters. Can I enter? And why can't anyone enter? Safety reasons. There are boards with nails in them, sire. Nails. <laughs> uh, yeah, can I? There could be tools in there that could help me in my quest. Would you at least let me take a peek? Negative. The throne room is off limits. I'm the king's father. Wouldn't you consider it an order? My duty is to protect the king and his family. And you, being his father, are part of my duty. It is too dangerous. <laughs> Would you take a peek for me then? Negative. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> if I do, who guards this door and prevents people from entering? But you would only be a few steps away. Uh, you could keep an eye on both places. Would be in direct violation of Article 7, Paragraph 5 of the Guard Dog Guidelines. But negative. <laughs> I think I saw something strange happening in the upstairs hallway. Strange? Could you be more specific? That's the thing. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe someone with your skills could make more out of it. I cannot leave my post. But what if it's something dangerous? What if someone's threatening the king and queen? According to the guidelines, Article 7, Paragraph 15, it is permitted to leave one's post in case of an emergency. Would you consider this an emergency? Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> right then, we're in the upstairs hall. There's no time to lose. <laughs> uh... The alcove. By the portrait's alcove. Go, go, go! Ah! Couldn't find anything! Are you sure you looked thoroughly? Very sure! Hmm. So we definitely I'm have to sure get in there. I noticed something strange up there. Tell me where, and I'll double check. So it's not in the alcove. Uh. Let's look in. Edgar's bedroom. In Edgar's room. Go! Damn it! So it's not Edgar's room. Couldn't find anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure you Very Yeah, sure. she looked. Alright, so it's not Edgar's room. I'm sh Tell me. Uh I mean unless there's gonna be another choice that I just by Kasima's bedroom. Go! Hurry! That's the farthest one away. Now... Damn it! Couldn't find... Are you... <laughs> you know, you, you'd think she'd start to pick up on it. Damn it, I actually don't need to touch there. <laughs> I'm sure... Tell me where... Uh... My bedroom. By my bedroom. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I have to actually... You know what? I wonder if I have to do something. If I have to set up a distraction. Couldn't find anything! Are you sure you look thor- I'm betting I need to set up a distraction. So let us... This is the alcove with the portraits. It's as good a place as any. Let's put the cloak here. That won't work. If it makes you feel any better, I would have tried that too. But then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> Alright, folks, I do have to cut off here. As always, thank you very much for watching. Tune to the next. Thanks for watching, folks.